I just picked up in Sparks, Nevada, headed down to Las Vegas. I'm in, I'm at US 95, going south. Sorry if you hear the sound of the truck in the background, but man, this is such an awesome place to stop at. I forgot some lake, like 90 miles south of Fallon, Nevada. Beautiful place. But I had already picked up a load yes, uh, Friday. Yesterday I did my 34 hour reset and I'm headed to Las Vegas with some casino chairs. So I'm headed to a hotel casino and gonna, gonna deliver it tomorrow, which is Monday. Beautiful view on US 95, south of uh, Fallon, Nevada. I do have the truck running. Hopefully I, I don't hear that much background noise. But, I want to tell a little story about how my, my pilot app got hacked. Um, and they stole over almost $1,500 worth of fuel. So I was at home for a whole week. And, and I get a transaction report from RTS, which when you get fuel with RTS, they'll send you a transaction report via email. So I was at home for five days already, and then I get a transaction report. Then it's talking about a, almost a $1,500 charge worth of fuel. I was like, whoa, 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 what is this? Like, that's not me. So I started looking like, where, I thought it was an invoice, because they send you a weekly invoice. And so every week, that's about how much uh, fuel I use every week, about, uh, right around 1500s so i was like man there's a mistake like i've been at home like how am i getting how am i getting this weekly invoice of 1500 dollars when i've been at home for this whole week and so i called my representative at rts like yo like my account got hacked and so i started digging and they they used my my pilot application they were able to log into it and that's how they were able to get fuel. So with, with my pilot app, if you, you can add your fuel card or your credit card, debit card, you can add it to the app. And that way, whenever you pull up to a pump, all you gotta do is go to the app and you know, put, put your information. Like the only information you need is to, it's a pin code. So you put your pin code and then you tell them what, what a pilot you're at and on the app it'll give you a pin code for you to type in at the pump so i uh so I, so that's how they were able to do it they they got into my my pilot app and they used my pin code and they at the pump this was in greenwood louisiana which i mean you know i passed through there but i've never stopped there to get fuel and so I call my representative, you know, I tell him what's going on. And at first he thinks, you know, I, I guess, you know, I'm trying to scam, scam, you know, uh, trying to file a report, a false report or something like that. Because at first he, he acted like he didn't really believe me that much. And I was like, man, this, this wasn't me. But after he saw like how much fuel was used, he's like, yeah, okay, you know, he didn't say I started believing you, but you know, he started to act more like, okay, I know I'm gonna get to the bottom of this, you know, he apologized and cause RTS pretty much is the broker. So the, the bank is fleet one or uh, WEX. WEX is the bank that funds. So he has to submit a report to, to WEX. And then, so he told me, he's like, man, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna take some months. Like, and I was like, 
man, like I, I can't pay for this. Like fifteen hundred dollars, you know, I can't, I can't afford a whole month worth of this, or I can't, I can't afford waiting months, and then this week they're gonna charge me for this. He's like, man, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. Like a lot of people have been scamming. Uh, they, they, you know, turned in false reports and stuff like that so they're they're more more they're getting they want more information out of you so he told me to what he told me to do was to file a police report which I called I called them I called the police department at Greenwood Louisiana and they said no you can't do it on the phone you have to come up here to file a police report uh, that way they can verify you know who I am and stuff like that I was like, man, like, but when am I gonna go to Greenville, Louisiana? Like, the chances are very slim. But so that was an option. And then I told my representative, you know, like they have, they have, they want me to be there. He like go, go locally. Maybe they'll they'll do it there. And by this time, they, this was the following day. They sent me a weekly uh, invoice report which said that they're gonna pull out the money the next day. So what I did is I called my bank to stop that transaction. They charged me $40 to stop all transactions coming out from that specific vendor, which is Wex. I was like, man, you gotta, you gotta stop that transaction. And they did. And a few, like a week later, a Wex sent me an email saying after further investigation that they were gonna refund me the money or not refunding, but they were going to uh, put a credit on my invoice. So, so I was like, man, I was, I was so happy. I was so glad about that. Cause I use the RTS field card and the mud flat field card, which, you know, I, I used to see which, which one has the best, best fuel discount, stuff like that. So I was, I was so happy when, when they gave me that email that they were gonna put credits on my, on my account. Cause Cause yeah, I, I had to stop using the RTS card for two weeks, and I was just using mud flap, and I was just using my credit cards. But with, but now they sent me that email, and then my representative has said, "Man, it's probably gonna be a few months before any of this gets resolved." It's like, oh my gosh! So I'm so happy that that was able to get resolved. But I've been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of posts that my pilot and Flying J. They had some type of data breach. Uh, a whole bunch of people are getting their their accounts hacked and stuff like that. They're using my pilot points. They're just draining all them points. And if you have any credit card or debit card on your uh, my pilot app, I'll suggest to take that off. It's it's such a pain because now I gotta get off and swipe the freaking card in the in the pump. But it's just, it's just the convenience of using my pilot app that made it made it so so awesome but now i have to get off and swipe that card at the pump i mean it's all right but so yeah hopefully if, if you do have that you know just i would i would recommend to take 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 that card off your app application because you never know you don't know who's gonna be next but i'm fixing to get back on the road i'll see ya
Yeah, so I found this little truck stop. It's supposed to have some alien souvenirs and gift shop. On the way to Las Vegas, so let's go check it out. It's supposed to be an alien souvenir shop. there but everything way overpriced like freaking expensive i was gonna get a few things few souvenirs but man i feel like i ain't even worth the money fix and get back on the road next stop las vegas let's go so crazy because one day you're wearing a sweater next day you're wearing a tank top just last week i was had my big old jacket out when i was in wyoming and today i'm in las vegas wearing a freaking tank top so i made it to las vegas and there is nowhere to park here especially because it's a sunday it's very hard to find parking spots uh they had some parking spots at the petro and the ta but they were paid parking but I found this uh, parking area close by to the Petra on the north side of Las Vegas. You have to pay 30 bucks to park here. It's like some big parking lot area. It, it's just parking, you know, There's not, it's not a truck stop. But they do have um, showers and bathrooms. But they're like portable showers. So I'm about to go check them out, see how they look. I was planning to take a shower that way I, that's why i parked here and not the petrol but the petro and the ta they charge probably around uh 25 bucks i think to park there and plus the shower which i don't get fuel there another 15 to 20 bucks to take a shower there and here you know i paid 30 bucks but i you know i get to park here and i get to shower here
entirety sunset there there are i know i know a couple spots that i could go park at like uh next to warehouses and stuff but i really i really wanted to take a shower today so that's why i decided to come over here tomorrow i got my delivery at 8 a.m which sucks because it's on it's on the whole other side of the las vegas The guy told me this is the showers right here. Showers available. Another shower, let's go ch check out the restrooms. You see, they're just some trailers. There's the the Petra over there. So it's pretty cool, I guess. I'm gonna come back here in a little bit, take a shower. So they have they have quite a bit of parking spots. And if you if you order if you reserve your parking spot online, it's uh 35 bucks. But if you get here to the gate, it's only 30 bucks, which you say five dollars. But the risk you're running and coming to the gate. Is you don't know if it's gonna be full if they're gonna have any parking spots available which look I don't know why that guy told me to park there not even a parking spot but that's where the security guard told me to park at I was like all right I guess I mean whatever I just needed somewhere to park for the night and somewhere to shower I was gonna get some drone footage, but they wouldn't uh, allow my drone to fly around here. Like, like there's a, like you got the zones in the in the U.S. where you're not allowed to fly drones. This is one of them. Well, I'll see what my day holds holds tomorrow. I got delivery tomorrow morning and then they said uh, they're gonna have a load for me tomorrow morning but I don't know anything about it I don't know where it's going how much it's paying nothing we'll see what, what, what they come up with peace my delivery this place was pretty pretty tight to get in I just got unloaded so hit it to a truck stop let's 
got to the TA truck stop. I did not want to come here. I was trying to avoid coming here so bad, but my load is not ready till tomorrow. The it, It's a convention center load, and the convention center load, there's such a pain. They're usually at a hotel, the convention center, it's really tight to get into. It's, it's horrible. I hate them, but I love them because they pay really good. So I got to sit here all day today at the TA. I got to pay for reserve parking, which that was what I was trying to avoid. You know, I thought I was going to come in here, get my delivery done, and get my next load and get out of Las Vegas. But I got another day to sit here. But I am going to... I'm gonna go check out the TA. Looks like they have a gym. I don't know if they do, but if they do, I'm gonna go and get a little workout in. So they ain't got no gyms here. I just went inside to go pay for a parking, which is $21 to park here and $16 for a shower. So that'll be $37 if I do decide to take a shower. But I don't know. We'll see how we'll see how the rest of the day goes. If I do shower, it's gonna be later tonight because so I'll be sitting here all day, it's supposed to get low 90s. If it gets pretty hot in here, I'll start sweating, I might go take a shower. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. You know, I don't I don't like to idle my truck, especially when, you know, I don't have to. So I'll, for most of the day, the truck is gonna be off. I just have my windows rolled down. And then the, they didn't have no fitness center here. Bummer, but it's all right, I got my dumbbells. I'm about to get a little workout in here in a little bit. Hey, <laughs> so I found this aquarium that's within the walking distance, about 20 minute walk according to Google. It's a, it's an aquarium that's inside of a hotel. It's supposed to be free. So I'm gonna go check it out. There's a truck stop over there. The TA where I'm staying at.
wasn't much of an aquarium. It was just a big old fish tank that you can walk around it. They got a bunch of cool little fishes in there. It was pretty cool. I'm just chilling outside. Little area you can chill. I'm fixing to go back to the to my truck here in a little bit after I relax. Ain't nothing worse than getting booted when it's already dark and middle of the night or whatever. You know, places like this that you have to pay to park, you know, they're, they're gonna have security and they're gonna boot you if, if you don't have the the receipt on, on the windshield or piece of paper that they gave you for the windshield. So when you pick up a load at the convention center or at a hotel, they, they typically send you to a marshaling yard or to a staging area where you go away uh, in order for your for your load to be ready you know because the, the these places like the convention center they're usually like downtown areas and usually big cities so they they can't be having you know all these trucks just blocking off the, the streets or park on the side of the street so they send you to this parking lot area so that's where i'm right now so whenever my booth is ready my load is ready they're gonna call me and tell me to head on over there. So there's not that much trucks today. I mean, sometimes they're, they're like almost over a hundred trucks, but I guess it, it's a smaller show today. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I've been here all day, a few hours. I mean, I've waited till the following day here. You never know with this convention center loads, but they pay good. They always pay detention or layover, so I've never really had an issue with it. Just a lot of downtime. how small it is trying to get loaded uh, trying to get in here was such a mess trying to get in here was such a mess I was in the street just blocking the road I was trying to get some video on my way out try to get some video of how crammed it is out there I'm never this is the first time I'm here it, it, I had such a hard time getting in here but I'm getting loaded to these DOT officers at the way stations. I'm here in uh, US 93 headed southbound towards Kingsman from Las Vegas. The way station is open and 
the, the, the DOT officer, before I even pulled in, he, he's already telling me he's gonna do an inspection on me, a level three inspection. This is a level three, so I should be good. I, there's some that are super picky about the logbook. That's the only thing I'm worried about. It's about the logbook. I don't have any violations on it, but on the logbook you're supposed to put the, the shipping documents number and the pickup location and destination, which I have a bad habit about not doing that. But just last week, you know, I got pulled in. Now this week, again, a level three, you know, paperwork and logbook. He seems like a pretty cool officer, so we'll see what he says when he gets back. Oh, he did pass me. Let's go, let's go. Another pass, two in a row. They are level three inspections though. It was a level two, level one. No, who knows what, what might have happened. Pretty happy right now. Two hundred dollar bonus from the company for passing it. Yes, sir. I don't think I told you where I'm going, but I just stopped in Flagstaff to eat lunch. I'm headed to from Las Vegas. I'm headed to Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, it's gonna be a late one for me. I'm be driving kind of late, not too late. It's about 10, 10 o'clock at night. I'm gonna try to make it to right outside of Al Albuquerque, New Mexico. delivery waiting to get unloaded I got here last night which but when I got here I got here around 7 p.m. but they already closed which they let me stay here overnight which I didn't have planned to get unloaded anyway till this morning Friday morning and the cool thing is though uh, my next load is coming from here where I'm at so I got unloaded I'm fixing to get unloaded and then they're gonna load me right back up uh, headed back headed to Austin, Texas to a warehouse over there. It's a convention center load, but it's going from warehouse to warehouse. Usually when it's a convention center load, it goes from the warehouse to the convention center or from the convention center to the warehouse. But this one's going from warehouse to warehouse. I guess they're gonna keep it on for storage at a warehouse over there. And then once they're ready for for package the load uh, they'll, they'll send somebody to go pick it up and take it to the convention center over there but so this load was 1850 miles the one I just delivered and from here to Austin it's 850 miles it feels so good when you know make pick up the load and make it to a delivery with, with no issues especially on the long run you know you know, I feel so relieved, you know, everything went good, you know, no issues at the pickup and no issues at the delivery and no issues on the road, you know, that those are the worst kind of issues to have while being out on the road. But everything went good, everything went smooth. Hopefully this load, my next load will be the same from here, Austin. I got delivered on Monday. Monday morning is my delivery. They told me that they have some other loads for me next week out of out of Georgia so might be headed this way on Monday morning so I'm fixing to hit the road 
I'll probably be in Austin by tomorrow. I won't make it today. You know, I got I got fresh fresh hours. You know, I got 11 hours to drive, but I won't make it there with uh, 850 miles to drive to get there. So I drive. I drive probably about nine or ten hours today, and then make it the rest of the way tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Saturday, so I do my 34-hour reset, and then for Monday morning, my delivery. I got something to talk to y'all about. Is renting a trailer a scam? But first I might eat my lunch that I warmed up in the truck. I got a pulled pork barbecue sandwich. With uh, some shrimp. So I'm here at a rest area in Morgan, Mississippi. When I first started with the company I'm with, I was paying $175 uh, a week for, for a trailer. It was a 2016 Great Dane trailer. So I was paying $175. But when the prices started uh, skyrocketing, you know, the price of trucks, trailers, all that stuff, the prices went up. And so the company, they increased their prices too. It went from $175 to $300, so it basically almost doubled in, in price for ramp. Which, during that time, my, he told me to take the, the 2016 I had, the very first trailer I had, he told me to take it in to get it inspected, which it was at one of his, his buddy shops. He, he owns a trailer shop there in Chicago. So I went there to get inspected, and. He's telling me all these things are wrong with it. I had, I had to put a little over $2,000 on that trailer. And you know, I was like, oh, you know, it's all right, you know, cause I'm gonna be using it. So I want a, I want a trailer that's, you know, functioning properly. And the, the slack adjusters was wrong with it. Like I couldn't, I couldn't slide the tandem back or forward and uh, the slack adjuster was wrong with it. So he ended up replacing all four slack adjusters and all four uh, brakes, which to me that was crazy because basically putting a whole new system under there. So I did that. And not even a month later, he's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm about, I'm gonna sweep Swap you out a trailer. I'm gonna give you a brand new trailer, the 2023 Great Dane trailer. And that trailer that you have, I'm gonna end up selling it because, you know, right now the prices are going crazy. And I, you know, at the time I was like, ah, oh, you know, all right, cool. You know, I'm gonna get a brand new trailer. So I didn't have no no worries about it. But fast forward to a year later, you know, like a month ago. As of right now, a month ago, he swaps me again. He swaps me trailers. And this time, he gives me an older trailer. It's a 2018 Great Dane trailer, which supposedly, you know, he just got it inspected and everything's working fine on it. Which it is working fine, but, you know, it's a five year old trailer. It's all beat up, it's all rusted up. You know, it's really not in great condition. And the thing is, he's still charging me $300 per week. And, you know, I, I don't think that's fair because you give me an older trailer, it's all beat up, but then the price per week, it's still $300. So essentially I'm paying $1,200 to $1,500 a month for this trailer. And it's a crappier trailer now. Because. You know, his excuse was, you know, bring it in, get the, I need to get the new trailer inspected, you know, I'm gonna try to sell it, etc. 
So now I swap it out. A week later, he gives me this bill for the trailer that I just turned in. Char he's charging me almost three thousand dollars because he found some things wrong with the trailer that need to be fixed. Three thousand dollars? Are you kidding me? It's a brand new trailer, 2023. You know, he sent me the bill, which you know I saw uh, tire. What else? Uh, the side skirt. Uh, what else? Some couple brakes, wheel seals just like minor things like that but it all added up to be almost three thousand dollars i was like how is it possible and not just that you know back in may they had dot blitz week and the company wanted everybody to do a dot inspection on the trailer and at that time i put a thousand bucks into it and so now not even a half year later, I'm having to cough up three thousand more dollars. It's crazy, man. So what I think, you know, he's 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 doing that on repeat with all the owner operators. You know, he's just swapping every owner operator on a yearly basis, swapping them trailers out. That way, the owner operator is responsible for paying, you know, any type of repairs or maintenance on the trailers. And once once he has that trailer basically brand new because just put all these repaired all this stuff on it then he turns around and sell it like like if the trailer was newer or brand new and make a profit on it and I think he does that on a yearly basis with all with all the truck drivers that he has under him which when I got this trailer that I have right now the 2018 I mean he took me he told me to take it to to his shop or his buddy shop I mean he checked everything I mean the tire depth on all the tires you know the the brakes you know he checked everything that way when I turn him back in you know he's gonna charge me for any type of usage and wear on those tires or brakes which to me that's kind of it's kind of crazy it, it sucks because I'm paying this the super high high rent every week and then when I turn it back in you know you still go and charge me a few couple of thousand dollars and it, you know I can't can't really do anything because it's his trailer you know it, he makes you sign for it so it's supposed it it's a mutual benefit agreement. So he lets me rent the trailer, you know, I'll make some money. And then he, he, I pay him rent. He makes some money off me paying him rent. But the thing is, like how much extra am I having to pay for rent? So the good thing is about renting a trailer is that you can make some money and not having to do power only loads. So that's, that's a plus when renting a trailer. You now the downside is, all the extra expenses that you now have and are responsible for like keeping up with the trailer maintenance tires you know brakes all that stuff if anything goes down you're gonna have to pay for it at least it is in my case you know i'm sure everybody different ag agreements but so that's that's the downside whenever you return a trailer i mean they're gonna try to get you for it for anything and that, not only that if the if my the company I'm with, the company you're with, their buddies with the repair shop that you're gonna take the trailer to, you know, they, they might add on, you know, a couple of things that doesn't necessarily have to be fixed or replaced. And then he's gonna send the invoice to the company. The company's gonna send you the invoice we sent me. And, you know, if they're buddy buddies, you know, might say hey you know add add a, a few extra things you know brakes or tires that you had to replace and then after you send me that invoice you know send me the actual invoice you know just take all those things off and i'll pay for for what the actual thing is so when when he sends me the invoice where he added a whole bunch of extra things you know he might just keep that extra money for himself and then just might cut the the repair shop you know a few hundred bucks is, is it like that? 
I hope it's not like that with the company I'm with because they've been pretty good to me but they they've done some sketchy things like that here and then that makes you wonder makes me think like what is going on like I said it's a, it was a brand new trailer not even a year or two old and you're already replacing all these things if they if he's renting me the trailer for 300 bucks but he only has a payment of a hundred dollars a week I mean he I mean look at the two hundred dollar profit margin every single week I have a buddy that works here he's buying a trailer off from the company I'm with and when he bought it he bought the trailer was before the prices went up and so his trailer cost thirty six thousand dollars a brand new trailer and his week his he has monthly payments of around six hundred dollars so he has monthly payments six hundred I'm paying twelve to fifteen hundred so that literally doubles from what he's paying and he's buying it and I'm renting and it's, it sucks when when you break it down like that because I mean all that extra money you know it could be going towards something else while you're still buying a trailer now I hate it it sucks I mean but what 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 can you do what can I do well I'll tell you what I can do it's basically buy my own trailer which that's what I'm gonna I'm look into doing because renting it whether you rent a trailer or rent a truck for anybody you know they're always gonna get get the they're gonna get the better end of the deal that's for sure so today we're about to get into October so probably starting of the new year probably go look into buying a trailer and he he wants me to buy this trailer that I have this beat-up trailer he's selling it to me for thirty six thousand dollars the 2018 Great Dane for thirty six thousand dollars I can go out there right now and buy a brand new trailer with that kind of money which is crazy it's ridiculous the so I, I've looked around online and the prices of trailers they they plummeted they went down so bad since a year ago from what they were a year ago and now I think right now is the best time to buy any type of equipment if you're gonna buy a truck or trailer right now is the best time because I think we've hit a, a a bottom I think we bought them down as far as prices go and the only places the only place the price is gonna go is gonna go up from here they're not gonna skyrocket like they they did a year ago but they're definitely gonna start slowly creeping back up especially if the if the market starts getting better which I feel like it is it's, it's starting going on incline and we're going into a holiday market so I think the price is gonna start creeping back up uh, for freight market and truck any type of equipment prices they're gonna I think they're gonna slowly start going back up so is renting a trailer a scam I renting a trailer serves its purpose which is renting it, and it should be a short-term rental that's, that's what it what, that's what it's designed to be it's not for long term it's not for a couple years or four or five years you know so it sucks in the short run because how much you got paid but it should only be for short rental the longer you keep it the worse the more money you're gonna end up paying and the worse it is going to be towards you and your business so that's you know I've been with this company almost three years and the whole time I've been renting but like I said before I was not paying what I'm paying right now and this is especially during times like this where any type of extra money counts it hurts it hurts the profit margin on unnecessary things that can be changed like buying a trailer so yeah so those are my thoughts on renting a trailer I'm about to get back on the road I'll see y'all soon I just stopped here in Abbott Texas to get some diesel pretty cheap fuel here uh, 392 per gallon so that's pretty cool and not only is it a truck stop but it's also a grocery store so I'm about to go get some stuff that I need uh, today I start my 34 hour reset so tomorrow I'll be off so I want to make sure I'm stocked up for that and yeah they do also have showers so I might take a shower
but let's go check it out. That's all I got. So the prices for the groceries, they are pretty good. They're like grocery store prices, but everything else, it's like truck stop prices, like the snacks, energy drinks, you know, everything else. So they're more, more expensive. Other than that, good to go. I made it to Georgetown, Texas. I'm about 40 miles away from my delivery in Austin, Texas. I got my delivery on Monday morning. Today's Saturday. I'm gonna go ahead and do my 34 hour reset here. And I guess that's gonna be the end of the video. Y'all drive safe, stay healthy. See you on the next one. <laughs>